Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. Today we're doing a first look at Pickett's Charge, a, a game about the Battle of Gettysburg from July 1st through 3rd, 1863. It's a game by Yaquinto. It doesn't have the standard album box. It has a regular box on it, and it looks like it's a higher complexity game than most of the Gettysburg type games I've played. So let's take a look inside and see what this is all about. Pickett's Charge presents a detailed tactical treatment of the Battle of Gettysburg. Gettysburg was the most decisive battle fought in the East during the American Civil War and the bloodiest battle ever fought on the North American continent. The game duplicates many of the intricacies of the warfare of, the, of this period, where victory or defeat depend on the interaction of such diverse factors as organization and command, command and control, leadership, formation and position, mobility, firepower, ammunition supply, and morale. As the Union commander, Meade, can you hold off the legendary Robert E. Lee and his hard-hitting army of Northern Virginia? Can you as Lee change history and defeat the stubborn Union army of the Potomac? Every unit that participated in this historical battle is represented. Infantry, cavalry, and artillery. The rules cover all the key factors in the battle. Line, column, prone, and dismounted cavalry formations, routing and rallying, leader effects and casualties, artillery capture and recapture, hidden units, ammunition supplies, reserves, and reorganization, and the importance of terrain. Let's take a look inside here. Unlike a lot of Uquinto's games, this has a box instead of a album box. Um, if, if you're not familiar with some of Uquinto's games, they use an actual box that held records as the packaging for some of their games. All right, let's take a quick look through the rule book here. Over here it's talking about a uh, general introduction to the game and here it's showing the different types of terrain. Kind of like a terrain key here. And it looks like infantry here have fire factors, melee factors, and movement factors and says what the parent unit is. And here it's talking about setting up the game, and here's your basic game. Alright, so here's a basic sequence of play. There's a Union portion of the turn, and a Confederate portion of the turn. There's a charge phase, which has four steps. Movement phase, which has two steps. Rally phase, and then a fire combat phase that has three steps. And then there's a melee combat phase. And then you do the Confederate portion of the turn, which is essentially the same, followed by a record-keeping keep phase and a victory point counting phase. And looks like units have facing in this. Yeah, here it's talking about front, flank, and rear attitudes. Looks like there's zones of control, too, as I figured. And here it's talking about morale. Here's all your movement rules and changing facing and stuff. Here's your rally phase and your fire combat phase rules. Showing your fields of fire for infantry and artillery. And here's your melee combat phase. And here it's talking about your victory point counting phase, how to win. And here it's going into the time record phase. That's the basic game. And here's the optional rules. Shifting initiatives, one of them. And there's movement formation and attitude options. Such as, and he's got breastworks and breastwork construction too. You can do an about face. Got a prone formation. Here's some of our reserve units. 
And here's uh, talking about leader unit casualties. And here's some more combat. That's part of the combat options. And looks like you can have optional rules where you keep track of ammunition expenditure too. If you really want to do that, I wouldn't. And here's your morale options. And here it's talking about leader replacements as an optional rule. And it looks like there's multiplayer rules too. And you can have fog of war in this too as an optional rule. And you have the option to use skirmishers too in it. Or to use units as skirmishers. There's a straggler rule. Interesting. Alright, here's the scenarios. Scenario 1, the first day's battle. Scenario 2, the second day's battle. Scenario 3, the round tops. And Scenario 4, the third day's battle. Followed by Scenario 5, which is Pickett's Charge. And Scenario 6, the Battle of Gettysburg. Now in the back it's showing the sequence of play with all options. Map seems to be some type of thin cardstock. It's got huge hexes though, which I kind of like. Actually, it doesn't look bad for an old game. And there's where you keep track of the points up on the top right corner here. Here's your player aid card. Got a combat results table showing your firing modifiers down here, melee modifiers, morale modifiers, and night morale table. And it's showing what the different numbers mean on the counters here. And on the back you have a movement cost table, it depends on whether you're infantry, cavalry, artillery, or leader, or skirmisher, or whatever. And here's your victory point table, route no notes, hex elevations, and sighting distances. Here's a confederate scenario setup chart. It's got the unit entry chart on the back. And here's your Union Scenario Setup Chart. And it has an entry chart at the back. One thing I've noticed about Yaquinto is they always have strange sizes for, like, the booklets uh, or for the player aid cards. Like, this is a really long uh, player aid card. Here's the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia. It looks like your time record sheet or something. Let's see what's on the other side. And you got the Union Army stuff on the other side. These, you can tear them out and use them as needed. Here's the counters and dice. As you noticed, the previous owner put uh, saran wrap around to keep the counters from coming out. These are known as the worst counter trays the industry's ever seen. They had no cover on them. Uh, you put the stuff in the tray, and if you accidentally move the box like that, they'd all go flying unless you put plastic or something over it. But I guess it's better than no counter tray. But I don't know. Some people might say you'd be better off with no counter tray at all. Thanks for watching guys, this definitely looks like one of the more detailed Civil War games I've played, especially if you use the optional rules. Hopefully I'll get a chance to try it and I'll let you guys know how it is, but I'm pretty backed up on reviews right now, so it may be a while. Have a good evening.